Welcome to The Painting Coach, and on the channel today, there be dragons. Now the first thing that when you're painting any large model like this, make sure you don't get intimidated. We'll go through it step by step and cover everything to get a great looking result. So the first thing we've done is prime everything with wreath bone. That's a light bone coloured primer. And we want to make a start on some of those lighter areas first. So now I'm going to use contrast paint and I'm using Agaros Dunes. And what I've done is I've mixed this 10 parts contrast medium to one part Agaros Dunes. So it's very, very thin. And I'm going to paint this all over those light areas. When that first layer of Agaros Dunes is dry, we're going to go back in with exactly the same mix and just paint this closer to those deeper darker recesses so for example if we look at the wing membrane we're just painting it closer to the spines just to give a little bit of a darker effect there once that's completely dry we want to bring a little bit of brightness back particularly where we're going to have the blend from the lighter color into the greeny blue later so take some wraith bone take a dry brush i use a makeup brush there's a link in the description to the ones i use and just gently feather this across you don't want to go too heavy just gradual and gently build up that color now we've got that transition in place, we just want to darken up some of these wrinkles and creases and pits on the membrane of the wings. So we can take some skeleton hoard contrast paint, thin it down with three parts contrast medium to one part skeleton hoard, and just paint this into all the recesses. Now it's time to start building up that bluey green colour, and the first colour we're going to use is Ethematic Blue Contrast Paint. I've thinned this again, three parts contrast medium to one part Ethematic Blue. And what I'm looking to do is work this around those areas where the warmer wreath bone starts to transition. So just paint it in along those edges and build it up nicely. We'll do the blend a little bit later on, for now we just want to get a nice even coverage. When that first shade of Ethematic Blue is dry, we want to go back in with pure Ethematic Blue and just paint this along the rest of the musculature, leaving maybe one scale's width between where you're transitioning between the thin ethematic blue and the pure ethematic blue. Once we're happy that our ethematic blue is completely dry, let's go and make some magic. So to get that really nice transition, we're gonna go back to Wraithbone and we're gonna dry brush it again. Now, if you're using the same dry brush you used earlier, make sure it's completely dry. I'm using a slightly different brush. And again, what we're looking to do is just brush along those transition lines and you'll start to see, because we faded those colors into each other using the contrast medium and the thin mixes, you get a really nice transition with the Wraithbone dry brush. You can also go and over those wings and if you've got any areas where perhaps you've spilt something or you put a little bit too much skeleton hoard on, you can blend it all in using a wraithbone dry brush. Now it's time to go for the darker blue and the colour we're using for this is pterodon turquoise. This is pretty straightforward but there are two parts. The first thing you want to do is pick a line of scales towards the back of the model as you can see here and paint it with purely pterodon turquoise. The next part, once you finish that, is to select maybe one or two scales across and paint this again with pterodon turquoise, but then clean your brush off, wipe it in clean water, make sure it's damp, not wet, and then use this to feather the edge. So you're feathering from the thematic blue into that pterodon turquoise. With all the main body done, we want to have a look at the head now, and we're going to do this exactly the same way, but I just thought it was a good idea to show you separately. So again, we're taking that pterodon turquoise and we're painting it back towards the back areas that we want to be darker. Once we're happy with where it is, we're going to clean the brush off in some clean water, make sure it's all wiped off and it's just damp, and then we're going to feather this into those lighter areas, giving you once again a really nice transition from the bone, ethematic blue to pterodon. Once you're happy with that transition zone between Ethematic Blue and Pterodon Turquoise, you can then look to use Pterodon Turquoise on other areas of the model. So we've got the back musculature of the dragon, and we've also got the musculature within the inside of the wing and the spines. Now, it's really important that we use two coats of Pterodon Turquoise here to get that dark colour, but we want to make sure the first coat is dry first. So just take your time, particularly when you're working around lighter areas you've already finished, and just work around until it's done, and then let that dry. To blend the head a little bit more effectively as well, to make sure we're happy with that transition, we can just use a little bit of Ghost Blaster Green and just gently dry brush this over. Now, if you do go a little bit heavy like I have in place, it's really easy to fix just with some thin down pterodon turquoise. And you can use a normal layer consistency uh, Ghost Blaster Green to add some of those sharp ridges back in. For all the hair around the dragon, we want to use a slightly different tone colour. So we're going to use a Kelly and Green contrast paint. Now there's no need to thin this down, paint it straight on. Just take your time and again, be careful around any areas that you've already finished. And this should blend nicely where we've got the pterodon turquoise running into that Kelly and Green. Now we want to highlight the spines on the top of the wing as well as some of that musculature. And the colour I'm going to use for this is Cybrite Green. Once again, I'm going for a dry brush, but just take your time because you don't want a chalky finish. You just want to catch some raised bits and 
add some interest. Now is as good a time as any to paint the eyes. So what we're looking to do is make sure that firstly, we've got a nice coat of wraith bone down over them. And then we're gonna use some Ayandan yellow contrast paint just to paint over that area. It gives you a great glowing effect. Once that's dry, looking at the box art, there's a little bit of a purple area around those eyes. So I'm just gonna take some Magos purple and drop this underneath. We'll finish one of the larger areas next, and that's the membrane on the top of the wing. So the color we're gonna use for this is Incubi Darkness. Now this is gonna need two, maybe three coats because it's going over such a light color, but we wanna keep that layer thin so that we get the smoothness and the only rough texture is from the model itself. To shade the wings down, take some Null Oil. Now you don't wanna flood the area with this, so just take your time and be careful. If you put too much on, it could pool, it could run underneath and ruin some of the work you've already finished. So spread it out really nice and thin. You're just looking to get this into those deepest recesses. When that's totally dry, we wanna highlight this membrane just to add some more interest. So firstly, take some Incubi Darkness and dry brush this towards the center of the membrane. Now, if you did make any mistakes with the Null Oil, you can use this to fix it. To carry on highlighting those wings and adding interest, what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of Ghost Blaster Green into that Incubi Darkness and carry on dry brushing. I haven't washed the brush, I'm just mixing it all together. Once you finish that stage, just use pure Ghost Blaster Green on the very rough edges to really pick out some of those wrinkles and cracks in the wing membrane. Next up, we'll finish all those black parts and all the armor plates. So you've got the plates running all the way along the length of the spine and the tail. You've also got them on the thighs and the forearms. So don't forget to do those like I did when I was filming. I had to go back and finish them later on. You've also got all the claws, which is on the feet, the hands and the wings. So base them all in a bad and black. The first highlight is with Mechanicus Standard Grey, and with the scales, this is pretty straightforward. You can use the side of your brush and pull it along the shape of the model just to catch those edges and get a really nice fine line. Once you've done that along the length and across the bottom of the plates, what I've started to do is just draw some really rough vertical lines in. This is the chitin effect, and if you've painted any Tyranids, you may be used to this. For the final highlight on all the black areas and to give the impression that this is really sharp, take some administratum grey and use this along the lower half of some of those scales and also on the tips and the points of all the claws. Where you've got that chit in pattern on the armoured scales, you can just paint this inside that Mechanicus grey from before. You can see on the video how this works and really you can be quite random here. You just don't want everything to be too close together so it looks like a lump. The last part of the dragon before we get onto those golden armor parts is that sharpened bone edge of the tail. So I've already based this Incubi Darkness and now I'm going to start highlighting. The first highlight is going to be with Cybrite Green. And again, what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch those edges and the shape of the model so we get a really nice fine highlight. Once this is dry, we're going to switch over to Ghost Blaster Green only on the sharpest edges and the highest points as this will give that really sharp effect. Now it's time for the gold armor. Now you'll have noticed I left all these parts off and what I've done is sprayed them with Retributor Armor paint. If you haven't got Retributor Armor paint, you can just paint them with Retributor Armor gold. Now the first thing to do is to shade all of the areas using some Reichland Flesh Shade. When that Reichland Flesh Shade is dry, we wanna to start to build up the shine again. So go back to Retributor Armor and use this to paint all those parts of the plates that are gonna be facing upwards or are gonna be catching some light. Once you finish with Retro Drama, we want to highlight them using Liberator Gold. We're going to use this along the sharp edges, as well as any areas that we can see from the box art are a brighter gold, such as the crown on the back of the collar. The last few pieces we've got to complete are those white elements. So firstly, we're going to base them with Corax White. Now I thinned mine a little bit much, so it's going to take maybe three coats. It all depends on the consistency of your paint. Corax White can be a little hit or miss. When you're happy that's dry, we want to shade all of the white elements using Apothecary White Contrast Paint. Now take your time, you don't want to get this on the gold or onto any of that Reichland Flesh Shade, but we do want to make sure we cover all of the white parts. This is the last but one step, so we want to take some white scar and highlight all those white areas. Where you've got the lightning bolts along the van braces, we can use the edge of the model to just pull the brush and get a really nice sharp fine line. Similarly, where we've got the image of Sigma around the collar, we can just target those raised areas and paint that with the white scar. The last thing to use white scar is to fill in those rooms that we've got in the circular elements in the center of those van braces. And the last step is to simply take some ethematic blue and paint that into that room that we previously painted with white scar. And that's it, this dragon is complete. Base it to match the rest of the army. Let's have a look at the turntable. So there we have it, this dragon is done and ready for action. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, tell a friend, and if you want to see the longer length version of this video, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, check out my other content. I'll see you next time.